long road! Woo! You can be a Lex Luthor or even a C. Montgomery Burns. All you'll need besides a sharp suit is a solar death ray. We've got you covered. Commence maniacal cackling, yes. Then the world's greatest card stacker, Brian Berg, will be here to, well, he's gonna stack some cards. What'd you think? He's gonna be hacking an Xbox, you moron. And bowling, drinking, and crazy people dressed up as characters from The Big Lebowski. Hey, it sounded like fun on paper. Brendan has the highlights from Lebowski Fest. All that plus some fierce land party competition, so put your feet up, break out a copy of Tobin's Spirit Guide, and feed yourself after midnight because it's Attack of the Show. Big up on this. Do that? I did not at all. I just he lost a don't ask him. Play right. down here. Welcome to the show. Just quickly before yes. we, we begin, a really important uh, announcement. Yeah. It is uh it's uh Mr. Christopher Walken's birthday today. Nice. Happy 62 birthday. years old. Happy birthday, buddy. Anybody else? No. I don't know. No, no one. No, no, apparently no. just you and I. Yeah. But happy birthday. Yes. Chris. Happy birthday. And of course, Sarah's here, hanging yes. out in the sofa. Hi, guys. How's it going over there? I prefer to call it the couch. The couch, man. It's more of a sofa Who type says thing, sofa? I think we need to let the chatters vote because there's been yes, animosity there behind the scenes over the couch and sofa. Couch. The couch. All right. What's going yeah. on over there? Um, I'm just chilling, obviously, but later in the show, I'm going to show you a damn good website. I'm only going to say it has to do with aviation. I'm just going to leave it open-ended. Okay. Wow. Are you intrigued? I bet it has something to do with flying. <laughs> I bet you're right. Uh, it's... Okay. Uh, All right. No. Sorry. All right. Um, real quick, you got to play with a camera the other day, uh, the camcorder. Yes. And I got to play with some camera accessories. Ah. So this is this is pretty neat. Have you ever messed around with like a, a lower end camera that has like a built in light and it kind of sucks? Like it doesn't your, really do a like good job. Like your cell phone. Ex yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this actually works for camcorders or for standalone cameras. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they're called Camera Bright. Let me show you that uh, right there. As soon as you do it, that, by the, by the Camera Bright company, and mm -hmm. as you can see, they're quite bright. Hold on, when they work. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that, that is puppy's bright. bright, right? I have it's one of those flashlights. Of, oh, it's like an go. LED flashlight. Yeah, yeah. Remote. It's got like a row of, uh, of white LEDs, but or in this case, yellow. It's using the standard mount for the bottom of the camera. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's got a little standard tripod, little little hole there. You just screw your camera in or your camcorder, pop it on. Right. Four hours of continuous use. Nice. Thirty bucks. Cool. Which isn't that bad, actually. That's not it does bad, a decent job. They mostly, yeah. By, by default, those suck. Big right. Time. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing a big, big budget production, no, this isn't going to suit <laughs> right. your lighting needs. Although but, I did see one of those that has like two hundred of them on there. Oh, see, that would be dead cool. serious, but they're really yeah. expensive. You could also right? blind your neighbors yeah, if right. you ever, ever want to blind. Now, what are these? Blind. Now, these, these are surprisingly interesting. I got to play with a whole bunch of these bad boys here. They're little camera phone lens attachments. So, ah. as you can see, they'll pop. They're the perfect size, right, for your little cell phone camera. You pop off the back. It's got a little sticky ring. Pop that over the actual camera lens, and it'll change up what the uh, the camera can do. Okay, it looks pretty cheesy though. These are like, do they actually work? No, well that's the thing. Some of them are incredibly cheesy. There's a, there's a whole bunch. There's like a zoom. There's a wide angle. There's a stretch. A star border. A heart oh, border. There's Here's like the anti glare. One right here I can kind of see. Yeah. So most of them are kind of lame. Again, like adding little hearts or little stars around around right. your camera. Yeah. But check these out here. This is a uh, this is how my trio normally looks when I'm like taking photo okay, of. Okay, so this is before and after pictures. Yeah, so yeah. here's here's the before. I'm taking photos of uh, picture or uh, toys on my desk. Uh, then this is the after where you can see the wide angle. Okay, I see. That's not bad. Cool. It, actually like show, it actually works. Type. Now here you can really see. You don't even have to take this full screen. You can see it right here. Blurry picture of a skull. But if I go to the next one, boom. Look at that's the difference. Awesome. You can see it right on your screen. That's the macro really cool. lens really pops it, and you can totally see detail up close. So I, I some would, of them work quite well. They're only like $10, bucks, nine ninety nine, ten yeah. ninety nine for each lens. And you know you can fit a whole bunch of them on your phone and walk that's around. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't, they don't look really cool on your phone. They don't but look cool on your you phone. You can throw them in your back pocket or something. You know. I don't know. I kind of like them. Nice. Now, next story, uh, Scott Michelle, you know PlasticBugs.com. Love the Plastic Bugs. We, we always talk about PlasticBugs.com. He's done it again. He has hacked the GIMP. Wow. Now, if, if you're unfamiliar with the GIMP, it's an open source Photoshop alternative application. Yes, yes. And uh, his site is actually kind of down right now because he just got slash dotted oh, a few minutes ago. Congrats on the Congrats slash dot. Congrats on the slash dot. That's great. But uh, let's see, can we move over to the Mac here? Yeah, we can. Uh, let's see here. And there hey, we go. Hey, there we go. Oh, we got okay. a Mac. All right. So anyhow, uh, as you can see here, he's taken basically taken the entire menu structure of Photoshop and completely put it on OS X within the GIMP. So okay. if you don't that want to, a, 
if you don't want to pay 500 bucks, you can go get it for free, and it has all the same menu features that you know. <laughs> for now. Like. You yeah, better go now. get it quick, by Until the way. Adobe yeah. sues him, and exactly, he's and then he's yeah. poor, and, and, then and we laugh at him. And take of pictures apartments. of them with our camera lenses. <laughs> with a little micro lens. Hey, look. Um, it yeah, it's actually really cool. One of the yeah. major complaints with the GIMP from a lot of people was that the interface was kind of clunky or hard to navigate. Right. And they now, didn't understand where to go for certain exactly, features. Exactly. But yeah. now all those Photoshop tutorials that are out there for free, and there's tons of them, they'll work just fine on the free GIMP. That's awesome. Now you, job, need, uh, you need Apple for that, though. Yeah. They, they port also Linux, ported too. it for Linux. They're looking for a C++ developer to port it to Windows, too, but that's not quite out yet. I hope so. they pull that off. Soon. Soon. We've got to go back to the PC yes. now. Let's go back there. What do we have? Oh, finally, the, the trash cade. Uh, we're having a little problem showing websites full screen right now. So I'll just say that this guy made a, an arcade cabinet completely out of cardboard boxes. Mm. And it totally works. Like, it actually supports the monitor, the speakers, the XRK joysticks, everything. <laughs> he dumps it. We're going to put all these links that we missed today in our show notes. Yes. We'll have to check this out. They this really, really do need cool. to watch. He even makes a marquee out of, like, crumpled That's paper awesome. and markers. It's really cool. Uh, again, uh, in our show notes, check it out. Very cool. Yeah, there Sounds you have it. Sounds good. All right. Now, today, we want your tech questions, so give us a call. The number is 800-839-7880. And you can email us through our web form at g4tv.com slash askaots, and you can chat with us. Quit doing that. In our RC chat room at chat.g4tv.com. I'm not allowed com. on that side. It's no, like, just like that's my side of the desk. Tiny, Don't you? I was just, you I was, got your little I was illustrating. You private space. Everyone All right, not tomorrow, but next yes. Friday. Next Friday, that's the following mm -hmm. week, will be your chance to uh, you star on the show and, and have your you face like there. on TV. To star on, on the, the show. show. No, no, no. You can actually, <laughs> if you support the band Eminet, you can bid on their eBay auction, and they're going to allow you to have your face on their lead singer's T-shirt. Oh, that's cool. When they perform here on the show. That's so, awesome. That's a great idea. That's really good. I'm glad I didn't think nice. of it. Huh. <laughs> so if you're a fan of Eminet, indie rock, or you just want your face on our show, get the details and the link to the auction at g4tv.com slash... Eminette. There you go. Yeah, Plus, yeah. it's Thursday, which can only mean one thing. Lamp party. It's the Attack of the Show Lamp party starring Brendan Moran. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Hi, hey. Brendan. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't talk like that at all. No. So you're, we're way off base. So, way off. Brendan, so, what's going on in the land? Tell us about the lamp party. I'm not, I'm not from Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. yeah no, Kevin, Kevin does like know, the dude. Fargo impression. Of He's like, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying. Yeah, or Strange Brew. Anyway, today we're playing <laughs> Unreal Tournament 2004. And our Rackspace servers are fired up and ready to go. And today is a very special day. We're joined by G4TV.com's own Laura Foy. Hi, Laura. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. How's the... Hi, uh... Kevins. Hi. Hi. Laura. Hey. What's hey. up? How's the game playing? Good. I'm doing well. I'm, uh, you know, kicking ass and taking names. Yeah? Yeah. Laura, I got to tell you, it's, it's such a nice welcome change to have you on the show. I was getting a little tired of interviewing... Fashion models right. and girls in bikinis and stuff like that. It's just a nice, it's a nice break. I know that must you know? get like so old for you. And honestly, it's so nice to be appreciated, like for my intelligence and invited down here. You couldn't find a stripper, could you? Uh, no. Right. Yeah, they don't return my phone calls. Okay. Thanks. Anyway, we will check in with you later in the show. Thanks for being a good support. Yeah. And now, watch out! It's coming from the shadows. The attack of the solar death ray commences right after the break. Surfing around the web the other day, we came across a website, solardeathray.com. Now, there's really no good reason to build a solar death ray, but a guy named Lewis and his buddies Tom, Andy, Mike, Toby, and Race decided to take upon the art of being pyros and built one. Now, a solar death ray actually has one function, and that's just to burn some stuff. Now, we decided a little pyrotechnical recreation can be a good thing, so we decided to build our very own solar death ray. Ah. Now, before we even show you the one that we built, we have to tell you the following stunt is performed by trained pyrotechnic professionals in a controlled environment. Do not attempt to recreate or perform this at home and anything that you have seen or anything that you've seen on the show today. Like, uh, I don't know, the little cameras. Was yeah, don't. The, the, the lenses too. were, the, the, could, the camera could, phone lenses were, were could burn shot. Things with uh, professional photographers yes. only. So That's make right. sure you don't go taking pictures with them. So let's, let's show off uh, this uh, solar death well, ray. This yeah. is it right here. Cool, it's, awesome. Uh, it, it, it can burn uh, pretty much anything that goes in front of it. It's, it's exactly... How exactly does it okay, work? So, I mean, 
basically how it works is think of it kind of like a big magnifying glass. All right. So you have tiny pieces of mirror that are all in angled like inwards towards a focal point. All right. So when the sun hits the mirrors, they all shoot a beam right to this point right here. And it's so concentrated and focused, it's almost like just use, like you used a magnifying glass when you were a little sure. kid, burn yeah. little ants and dogs. Yeah. This will basically burn anything that you like put up on this little rack here. Now, why, why, why tiny little pieces of glass and not just one big, you know, concave? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we're cheap here, so we want the tiny little pieces no, of glass. No, but that's good. No, I mean, no, you no, can make one cheap, yeah, right? Yeah, you can I mean, build one yourself, even though we just told people not to build one at home. Right. Well, yes. they're not supposed to, but you could. <laughs> right. Yeah. If, yeah, if you're Fair trained. Enough. So here's some examples <laughs> right here. You can see it's, it's burning through some foam core right here. Whoa. Yeah. That's look foam that. core. That's, that's hardcore that's foam, foam core. That's foam core, baby. So the yeah. sun hits it there, and there it's, look at that. It catches on fire. Oh, you wow. got a guy freaking out. It's a good thing we have, we have a pyrotechnic uh, see, specialist. He's trained. Can he you is trained to use the fire extinguisher. Two bursts. Sure. Boom, boom. Puts it right out. Nice. Now, we decided to try a, a few other things. Oh, uh, a VHS okay. tape, for example. If you have any tapes at home you want to get rid of. Good. Oh, there's uh, our professional. Yes. See, he's got the <laughs> goggles he was, on and everything. He was saying, I'm a professional. I wear goggles. Those are the professional goggles. And uh, we use one of the professional clips there to tape the uh, the tape up. Wow. And uh, we also moved on to AOL discs. Oh, of course. Yeah, now these these put off uh, toxic fumes, but eh, what the heck. It's a professional, yeah, again. Yeah, it's professional. The goggles Dealing protect the him from the toxic <laughs> fumes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, he's and, smiling uh, now. And Paris Hilton's new latest book. Oh, come on. It's pretty good. It, it's, it's all right, it's but, you know, we decided to burn it anyway. Isn't that the Kevin Rose Book Club of the month right there? Uh, I like, got it free last month. Good. It, good. It's all right. It's okay. Really. All right. Yeah. Now, you can find photos and schematics of our death ray. Now, why are we putting up schematics if we said not to do it? Just to show people how not okay. to build one, okay, essentially. Right. Like, <laughs> you can find them at g4tv.com slash AOTS. Very nice. What do you think of that, Sarah? You like the death ray? I do like the death ray. It's oh. pretty good. We have fun with our death ray. Oh, you want me to tell you what's coming up next? Sure. Okay, my damn good download's on the way. It's actually a damn good website. It's useful, inventive, and it's even dangerous if it ever got into the wrong hands. So if you want to know more, hurry back. And card stacker Brian Berg is going to show us just how strong playing cards can actually be. So stick around. It's going to be a great show. Here comes today's damn good website, suckers. But you were supposed to say sucker. Like, you sucker. All right. There's more than one person watching the show, hopefully. I hope so. Hi, all three <laughs> okay, of you. Okay, today's damn good website is going to give you so much information about commercial aviation. You'll never know what to hit. Yeah. My interest is peaked. I know. Well, here's the thing. Okay, let's just get right into it. This is called Airport Monitor. What I'm doing in, is monitoring LAX airport that I fly in and out of all the time. Now, we're looking at a five-mile view, right? So we've got the red is the selected airplane that I'm looking at right now. This guy's at 4,900 feet. But let's Are just select another guy. Are you kidding me? They publish this info on the net, like, just yeah, for kids. this is... Well, I mean, it's, it's for kids and adults alike. So let's just say I'm going to click on this guy. He's arriving because you see my little key down at the bottom that ah. blues or arrivals. Now I've, I've selected him. Oh, wait. Hey, where did everybody go? Oh, Kevin Rose is out back pointing the solar death ray at planes. That's not good. That's strange. That's, that's bad. That's a drag. Okay, well, let's move over to oh, there you go. There's Kennedy some Airport. What's kind of nice about it is, is that I actually, if you see at the top here, you've got sort of a, uh, a bunch of dates. What you can do is anything that's less, more than three hours ago, they'll give you full information on the flights. No, they won't do this for the real time. Okay, well, that's what we were looking at for LAX. Smart. Because, you know, obviously, if, if people know too much about how flight patterns work at different airports, that could be dangerous, right? right. And that was my first thought, like, oh, my gosh, how can I possibly know all this sure. stuff? But if you go back more than a couple hours, it's like, hey, they've already landed, not a big deal. So hey, if you click care, on the plane fine. here, it gives you all the information. Flight ID, CH, what's that probably like? Canadian? What was it? CH? Swiss Air? Sure, or something yeah, like that. we'll take that. Yeah, JetBlue, there's a JetBlue here, flight ID here. And aircraft type, what the aircraft type, what the altitude ah. is, and all of, the, all of the interesting stuff gives you everything that you would need to know. And if we combine that with your other damn good website, then we know exactly what the best seat is on that plane. Absolutely. Uh -huh. What's cool, here, LAX is back. We had a little hiccup here. When you look at the five mile, you go, okay, well, there's some planes. There's planes coming, planes going. Yeah. The black stuff is in transit, sort of like they're not really coming airports. or going yet. Yeah. But let's look at 10 mile view. Then it starts Whoa. to get a little complicated. That's crazy. And let's go up to a 20 mile view. Now it's just out of control. Let's even go to the 80 mile view. Look how many planes are hovering over our building right now. Isn't that funny? You think like with all these planes, I would look up in the sky and you'd just see planes everywhere. Right. But you never do.
Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. It's out of control. Wow. Isn't it? And this doesn't just apply to Kennedy Airport and LAX. If you look at uh, this is actually Passur, like P A S S U R dot com. Oh. There's quite a few airports that are involved. Not every airport in the nation, but like 50 or so, 50 of the major airports. The, so, the important ones. So, and and if you think to yourself, well, can I just go to an airline website and find out when planes land? Yeah, you do, but you don't get to see how they do it. And if you know anything right. about LAX, LAX is very strange flight patterns. People got a circle all the time. You know how Crazy it is. Crazy eights. And Crazy eights and all sorts of good stuff. So you can actually see it happening in real time. Super cool. I love how you said, you know how they do it. I'm like, yeah, sure. You fly in and out of LAX. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Work with, with me. Uh, yeah, okay. I normally <laughs> wake up when, by the time we're at the gate. So fair enough. If you want uh, the link to look at your own airport or one nearby, go to g4tv.com slash the Sarah Lane Files for the link to play with Airport Monitor yourself. So fun. Love it. Whew. Now, I see you guys have built something over there. What the heck's going on, Kevin? <laughs> Well, for the next two days, master card builder or card stacker Brian Berg is building a giant card sculpture next door. But today, he is here to show us how strong playing cards really are. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey, good to be here. So, tell me what you're doing here. I mean, I, I have a hard time building these myself. I've tried in the past. Well, I do too sometimes. You guys have been watching me, I'm sure. I, I can put like four or five together, but explain to me how this works and how, how you build such large structures. Okay, well, the stuff that I'm building next door that everybody will see, I believe, tomorrow, maybe a bit today, I'm not sure, is all built with some kind of repetitive geometry, meaning I set the cards up in a rather geometric way. So, here you can see a little sample of what I've done. It looks kind of like an ice cube tray or right. a waffle. And the cards, when they're set up in that nature, they kind of are forced to help each other not only not fall over, but not even bend, because there's always something to stop it from doing the, um, the bad thing. I see. So um, I built over here a larger example of this, and I've you know, put some walls around the outside, rooftops between them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a concrete block, several of them hopefully, on top of here to see. So now, these are just standard cards. Standard playing no glue, cards. No glue. No little twigs in there to help like no, support. No, no twigs. Okay. <laughs> so, with this, okay. Now, why three levels though? I don't understand. Wouldn't that make it not quite as? Well, if I or? build one, that's that's not trying. Two is kind of cool. Three is better. Plus, it also almost looks like an additional concrete block. Right. You know. Okay. So let's, I let's guess see it's just this. playing around. So, so this is a real block. This isn't a foam block. This is a uh, real block. Right. I'll probably drop it on my toe, and then you'll see how real it is. I have to put the first one on really slow, just because I don't want to. Right, I was going to say, shift it around. This is really one side, the, and then just all the goes deal down. breaker. Take your time. Okay. There it is. All right. Okay, so that's, so that's the what, first about block. 15, 10 pounds, 15 uh, pounds? They probably are about 15, maybe 20 pounds. Maybe 20 pounds, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm sure it'll do two. We'll see if it'll get three. So this is the second block. So this is 30 pounds. How in the world is it supporting this? So these are these are 20 pounds a piece, so this could be 40 pounds total then, right? Yeah, and the most that I've ever done in a structural engineering laboratory, I built a larger one of these in a machine that adds weight in a kind of computerized Oh, so you use computers that stress tested. And it actually it... Um, kind of winded from this. Anyway, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Um, <laughs> it actually held about 600 pounds per square wow. foot. So this is, um, okay, this is a smaller right scale of that. I hope these don't fall, so if they do, okay. run, okay? All right, go ahead. Because um, it could 60 happen. pounds. Okay, there's the... Wow. I'm going to go fast before something happens. Whoa, whoa, here we go, 80 pounds. <laughs> I'm really going to start. I'm standing way back now. Overworked. Okay. There it is. There it is, 80 pounds. Woo! That's awesome. Okay, so... So now prove to me... Mm. I, I There was no glue or anything used in this. you, you got to show me. Uh, take this little thing right. apart, and I want to see if... Uh, yeah, nobody ever believes this, of course. <laughs> okay, so... The uh, whole thing is very much Look at that. very real. Just cards. Yeah. All cards. Awesome. Now, we're going to see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming you on bet. the show. We'll be back tomorrow to show us uh, your bigger creation. Uh, now, prepare yourself. Kick yourself a little uh, Russian and kick back and relax because <laughs> the feed's up next. Who am I talking about? <laughs> Sarah, stop laughing. Look at She's falling down. You said to kick a Russian. <laughs> Did you realize that? Go ahead. Kick a Russian. Kick back a white <laughs> Russian. That's, That's my <laughs> Because we're going to Lebowski Fest, and to no one's surprised, those people can drink. We'll be right back. <laughs> Kick yourself a rush. Go ahead.
we're back. Now, in a little while, Brendan's going to show you some of his favorite toys from thinkgeek.com. I am. Fun. I plan on it. And we'll check in, of course, on our LAN party. Also, we want to mention that on tomorrow's show, this is awesome, our Boost Mobile Live Music Friday guest is the band Adishwala. So don't miss that. You don't want to. I wonder if they'll tell us all uh, their thoughts on God. No, I'd really like to hear them. Sure, Kevin. It, <laughs> that was a good, good comeback. It, it, it took me a while. It found at the box office, but for some reason, The Big Lebowski still has legs seven years after it came out. It centers around a guy called The Dude, who some people confuse with another guy called The Big Lebowski. It's a very intelligent stoner movie, and it has fests, which attract hundreds of people who call themselves achievers. Here are the highlights from Lebowski Fest West. There's bowling, there's beverages, white Russians, oat sodas, um, trivia contest, costume contest. There's some really good costumes tonight. Meet and greet the actors, uh, and then we uh, show the movie. Now, I gotta be honest with you. I've seen The Big Lebowski a couple years ago. Thought it was pretty funny, and then I moved on with my life. Well, it turns out a lot of people haven't quite got there yet. But if you need a refresher course, basically the movie's about three things. Bowling, smoking pot, and white Russians. Whatever tempted you to come up with this idea? Uh, really, man, uh, we were uh, really bored at a tattoo convention. So uh, we started going through some uh, lines of uh, lines from the movie. And uh, we were like, man, if they can put on this lame ass tattoo convention, we should be able to have a Lebowski convention. So how was business? Very, very good. These people drink a lot? They're luscious. You are the inspiration for the movie, The Big Lebowski, are you not? In a manner of speaking, yeah, Joel and Ethan had hung out with me for a while. Thought they might want to make a movie with a bunch of uh, friends that like to hang out. People like to look for ways to get together, and sometimes they call it Woodstock, and sometimes it's, you know, Lilith Fair, and sometimes it's... You put a lot of effort into this. This is some quality work here. Thank you very much. I'm unemployed. So I have oh. a lot of free time. Yeah, yeah. It shows. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It's not fair. My girlfriend, she thought we were going to get a million dollars. She cut off a toe. Are you gay German Nihilists or are you just German no, Nihilists? No, I just, but just, why do, why? So the obvious question is what's up with the shirt? Uh, the shirt says vagina, which is a word that makes some men uncomfortable. Um, Not me. Now, there's a lot of big name actors in The Big Lebowski, and Jeff Bridges, John Turturro, Tara Reid, and John Goodman couldn't be here tonight. So we did the best we could. All right, give it up. All right, first of all, let me say that I loved you in Arachnophobia. The what? Now, I must be mistaken, but I was pretty sure you were on trial. How is that going? Uh, the trial actually hasn't started yet. You are the Big Lebowski. I am the Big Lebowski, yeah. Did you think when you were making this movie that a couple years down the road you are going to be at a Lebowski fest? <laughs> well, you never know, you know. Tara Reid really is missing, though, isn't she? Yeah. And I think she's had some sort of breast augmentation because Tara Reid did? Yeah, well, if you watch the video, and I'm sorry that I've done this because I did some research on her, they actually, if you saw it, they cut out her nipple. You, you could see some scar around her nipple. I think she had breast reduction surgery. Tara, if you're listening, we'd like some answers. I'm the guy who owns the Corvette. When when Walter goes to plan B and starts smashing the Corvette, and then I come out, hey, that's my baby! What are you doing, man? I just bought the car last week! I kill you, car, huh? You like it? F you! Huh? F you! And so on. We're gonna have to bleep that. Wow, worst bald cap ever. There was like five of those guys. It's the, it doesn't have a name, it's not, character doesn't have a name, it's just a guy who. Is that why they, that's Camaro. why it takes them an hour to explain who they are. I'm that guy. You know, the guy who does right. this and that scene. The, and cool, the, the yeah. cool thing about the, the, the festival is there's like, there's characters that are, are not in the movie. They're just mentioned like in passing and people make up their own versions of what that character would ah. like. Somebody's grade school teacher is involved and, you know, it's a lot. It's people who have a lot of time. Ah, gotcha. Good, worth, it, worth visiting for, for those out there who are wondering? Worth going to? Well, I don't think it's in theaters anymore. No, not the movie. The the fest. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I would watch the movie too. If you know, if you're gonna go to the fest, yeah. you probably want to know what's going on. Probably in a rental store. 
Uh, yeah, the rental stores is, uh, might be a good idea, Kevin. Good place to get movies. Yeah. Occasionally. Yeah. I'll, good job, uh, Brendan. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, it's worth running. Nothing else to understand what the hell your friends are talking about when they throw around the lines for the film like The Dude Abides and Shomer Shabbos, which I'll tell you later. Good. Appreciate yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Great job, Brendan. And now, fresh from the front lines, it's Sarah Lane with the feed. <laughs> Firefox browser is pretty neat, and Google's search engine is practically indispensable. Put them together and you get a force more powerful than you could possibly imagine in your wildest dreams. Google's providing a pre-fetching service for Firefox users that essentially predicts and preloads sites that it thinks will be asked for in the future. No word on whether this function will come equipped with a ta-da sound effect. But I can dream. The crystal ball feature uses downtime to research past searches and activity before storing selected items for future use, officially making your web browser more productive at work than you are. Like parachute pants, fat shoelaces, and Steve Gutenberg, your constitutional right to privacy seems to have just been a passing fad. The National Telecommunications and Information Administration has decided that domain names ending in the suffix .us do not have the right to privacy. No new domain names will be issued as private under the suffix, and those who already have such websites will have to reveal their names by January of next year or expect a visit from a couple of nice guys named Chad and Ted who wear dark sunglasses and know eight different ways to kill a man. Tell them we said hi. The recent relaunch of the beloved British series Doctor Who has had a rough go of it. First, the pilot episode was leaked onto the internet, then the guy who leaked it got sacked, and now the star of the series has quit. To make matters worse, to all those government officials and soccer moms who wet themselves over the basic snatch and grab carjackings that go on in Grand Theft Auto, apparently you haven't seen anything yet. Thieves in Malaysia jacked an unsuspecting man's new S-Class Mercedes, only to discover that the security system on the car required the man's fingerprint to start. Hmm, now, what to do, what to do? Ah, yes, take a machete, hack the owner's finger off, and use it to start the car. See, if you just stop and think these things out, they get a little clear, now don't they, people? Now, if Lexus or BMW are working on a retinal scan ignition or blood of your firstborn security system, please just stop now and just walk away. Just don't be involved. And that's today's feed. Get the hell out of here. Wow. I don't know. Have you seen the S-Class? It's not bad. It's a nice car. Is it worth losing your finger over, though? Well, I have a, I have a question, actually. Hmm. What does he do when he wants to start the car again? Does he got to keep the finger in ice? The thief? Well, yeah. You just you, you hang out. It's just the print is all you need. Yeah, but you need the finger. You, could cut, you don't. Do you, do you need the whole finger? I don't yeah. think you just need the print. Well, Kevin, that's kind of one and the same. But you know, you just take the. Oh, okay. I'm not going to tell folks at home how to skin the finger off the end. Never mind. Please don't. When we come back, someone better ring a bell, cause Sarah, uh, cause Laura Foy, is taking people to school in our she, land party. There she is, right there. There she is. The feed is brought to you by Progressive. Think easier. Think progressive. All right, it's time. It's time. I was just checking. That's sure. right. It is time. Yeah. It's time for Attack of the Show Land Party. The game is Unreal Tournament 2004. And fresh off her shoot of the next episode of G4TV.com, it's television's own Laura Foy. Laura. Hey. How are you, brother? What's going on? Not much. I'm on a killing spree. Yeah, I saw. You're actually very good at this game. Thank you. I thought you were terrible. Um, no, that's most other games. Oh. But this is this is my jam. Right. Right. Are you are you a more first person shooter kind of gal? I what? am, and I really believe, and I'm going to say this honestly, the first person shooters are meant to be played on a uh, PC. Oh. You can't you can't do it with a with a console. So right here, I feel very much at home. Oh, I have taken a mental note yeah. of that. So you are actually very fortunate. You're christening our brand new land party space and the yeah. brand new set and everything. I want to get your honest opinion. What do you think? Um, it's nice. You know, I like the old set. I like the new set. It's it's comfy. I like the red. The reds are Very good. Very Valentine's Day. The reds are soft. Uh, uh, we don't got a new set. Us. Excuse me? The old set sucked, to be honest. You can be <laughs> honest with us. Laura's towing the company line. She's doing a nice That's, job. Hey, their show repurposes other people's We got a new sorry. set, too, you know. 
Oh, and you I, did? Yeah, we did. And I'm going to have to say that our set's a little bit nicer than your set. Oh. What, what, do, you have mean, on, what do you have on your set again? I want to throw down. Do, do, you actually, do you have like a land party area on your set or anything like that? Or, or <laughs> actually, do you have a couch on no, your set we either? Had, I was we wondering had about. Two girls on our show. Ooh, we have Kevin Pereira. That's yeah, and like you know, a girl. Whoa, whoa. hold me back. Like hold girl. me back. All right, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. What's up? What's up? Okay, all right. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, next question is, and, yeah. I, and I know there's been a lot of talk uh, amongst the other shows in the building. A lot of people are yeah. getting a little bit nervous. Are you guys planning on putting anything um, like a like a web server or anything like that in someone's ass? Um, we do that usually before the cameras start rolling. We experiment with all sorts oh, of things. Yeah. Anally. Um, oh, but so that's <laughs> what's going on over there. Yeah. You know, it just peps you up right before the show. I'm just kidding. But we do experiment oh, with dunk hot. takes and dunk pies take? right. and um, mashed potatoes on the pants. You know, we have all sorts of fun over on our set. That's G4TV.com, which is on Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. Good plug. Thank you. Yeah. Was it natural? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Laura, thank you very much yeah. for stopping by. We yeah. were going to get into a quick dispute. Maybe it's time to bring it. Guys, I need to know, who's got better hair? Uh, Laura or myself? Ooh. Mine's usually a little curlier. Should we like a quick studio poll? But, yeah, I think that's what's going to be the deciding issue of who's got the better show, oh. uh, who's got the better set, and stuff like that. Uh, Kevin and Kevin? It seems fair. Seems like the only way. Kevin and Kevin, can I get a, can I get a ruling on that? I mean, do we back up our, our guy or give him the honest answer? I don't know. I don't know. I Brandon think you just gave the answer, Kev. He does. He's, he's got to get that little wave. I was, wearing a, I was wearing a hat all day today. Um, there's pink in here. I have more than one color going on. Yeah, oh, yeah she does uh, get points for that. Effort. She does. She does. She does. There. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it up to the chatters. I yeah, think. that's right. Mm -hmm. All right, done. Let the chat room decide. Fine. We'll let you know at the end of the show. Okay, thank you, Laura. Thank you. As Laura said, be sure to catch G4TV.com every Friday night at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Brendan. Your, your follicles look lovely. After the break, we'll be taking some of your tech calls and... We're going to raise the nerd bar higher, as if that was even possible on the show. Can you Ooh. believe it? Look at that. Brandon shows off some pretty nifty toys <laughs> from thinkgeek.com. I'm putting my money on tomorrow's attack of the show. Kevin Rose will show you what you need to build your own high-def PVR. And pinup vixens Missy and B from suicidegirls.com will be stopping by maybe just maybe they'll show us their tats. All that and a live performance from the band Dishwalla right here on tomorrow's show. Kevin. Yes, Brendan. I have some goodies for you. Really? And for the viewers at home. Where? Where'd you get such, such I good got goodies? I them from thinkgeek.com. If you don't know what it is, it's a website where they give all these kind of nerdy toys. You can get like the, uh, my favorite is actually, which, which I don't have here, it's the red swing line stapler. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, space from off space, yeah, yes. Yeah, I would burn the building down. And, yeah. Very so nice. Like anyway, stuff like that. So I want to just run you down a couple things that I've got here. First, let me start. This is Octane Re-Energizing Gel. Are you still harping on the hair thing with, with Laura? Is that what this is about? No, this is not hair gel. Oh. This is, you rub, actually, I'm going to give this to you, Kevin. Ooh, a little concerned. And what I want you to do is concerned. put it on your, the back of your neck. And a little behind the ears, and we're going to check in with you later. What is it? I mean, it's gel. Just take it easy. What's it? It it re-energizes you. God, baby. Will it work through the makeup? <laughs> huh? Huh? I've yeah. Got, no, like, put it on your neck. I doubt you have makeup. Yeah, you'd be surprised where they put the powder on me, buddy. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, it's tingling. It's burning a little. Is it supposed to? No. Oh okay. Okay. It's not. Right. Okay. Good. So we'll check back with you, and you know, let me know if there's any. Is this know, a practical joke? Like, is this kind of no? Actually, I put, I put some on right for the show, and I swear to God, but I want you to tell me. Oh, okay, last done. Week. All right, I'm putting some on my Increase neck. The circulation. You should be energized. Some soon. behind the ears. A little wet sure. behind the ears. Moving on. Okay. I've got the cubes. These are cubicle play sets. Oh, awesome. You get Bob, you get Joe, you get Ted and Ann. I've got it here. I kind of, I kind of broke them. Um, there's some video uh, of this, which is kind of funny. They're, uh, they're tough to assemble. And it, what you can do is you can make like a little cube farm, but y y you need kind of uh, dexterity, which I don't have. Ah. You know, you got little stickers you can put like on like your monitor. You can put them like on the side. There's like, like the girl has the cat hanging on the tree. It's just hanging yeah, there. So a lot of the office Typical cliches. stuff you'd find around the it's office. It's funny. And this is, this is good because you can take out your frustrations oh. on the cube farm. They're not designed for that, are they? That's well, not... it, it felt really good. There's 13 bucks for uh, the, the four or five of them. That's and not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Moving on, Kevin. Sure. How's your neck, by the way? Uh, it feels energized. Really? No, I, I don't get what this is supposed to do still. It, it energizes you. What is in it? Is it caffeine? Is yeah, it uh, ginseng. Oh, ginseng. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll come back to that. All right. Give it some time. Next, this is the big Tiki drive. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Well, now, I saw a little the, the little USB thing on the inside of it there, on the top. There but Yeah, what you do is you, uh, you can store your pictures and your music. It's just a drive. But it's a Tiki drive. And it lights up when you plug it in, and it's uh, little red uh, eyes glow. But you can't connect it direct. I mean, you'd have to use a cable to connect it from there to your PC, right? You'd have to use a USB cable. Because yeah, it's not wireless. Well, no, but no, I'm saying that, that you know, the plug's in here. The plug's in there, yes. so you can't exactly just go pop it into a, a Oh, laptop. no, no, no. It's not like one of those sushi so things. No, okay. Yeah, just check. Yeah, it's like 80 bucks. Completely oh, wow. Like yeah, yeah. How big? How much storage? Uh, pff, not enough. Ah, fair enough. $70. It's on the website. Fair enough. Finally, also, Kevin, think he does apparel, too. And I want to show you. This is my brand new T-shirt. Yes, Jesus very nice. Jesus is effing metal. That's, uh, a, that's a Penny Arcade thing, Yes, isn't it, it is, yes. But, you know, we're plugging Think Geek here. Yeah, no, well, but, I'm just, but they sell the Penny Arcade shirt. Right, right, right. And not only is he the son of God, he's, you know, he's metal. 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 Yeah. Right. Also, I want to show you, this is my watch I'm wearing. This is a retro LED watch. Get a shot of that right there. It's kind of big in the 70s with, you know, the guys at NASA. And what really made this take off, a little history for you, oh. in 1977, the James Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved... Oh, sorry. You said history lesson. It's a reflex. Anyway. It's like a Pavlovian. Thing. Okay, and finally, Kevin. No, no, no. What's it do? The it's, it's, it's the James Bond. It it's, it's, a, it's a watch. <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway. The Megazooka. Whoa. Now, you may be familiar with the Airzooka. This is, that's its smaller cousin. This is the Megazooka. This is kind of disappointing. It's not as good as no. you might think. There's some video of me kind of ambushing a couple coworkers around the office. It's kind of funny. Um, it's got a sight. It's got a trigger. So but all you do is just pull it back, and you can snap it. There I am. This is oh, that's yeah. a, that's a writer. Right. Right. So the big deal here is that they've just they've made it larger and added a trigger, but it's not as powerful. No, as it just doesn't. It, you, you'd expect to be able to knock people. There's Sarah getting hit. Right, right well, because the first the first Arizuka was pretty strong. Yeah, like, you know, can, you can is, hit people all across the office. This is just really disappointing because you thought you'd be able to like blow the doors off, but you can't. Mm. Um, it's like this. Oh, How'd yeah. That well, up close. It, yeah, you can feel it. How's the gel? Uh, it's good. I'm just more enjoying rubbing myself right now. So, okay. Fair enough. Uh, if you want links and prices for all of these, they're in the show notes. Whew! I am energized, but now it's time to take some calls. Kevin, Sarah. That's right. You ready to take some tech calls? Yeah, I want that watch. After though. whatever that was that we just watched. I like that watch. Yeah, let me a little gel. Here's the gel. Kevin, I've never seen anybody be more difficult about a little innocent rejuvenation. I just didn't know what it was. I don't trust Brandon. I'm sorry. Here, put this just on your neck. Just apply the product. Products help. They make us all better. See, you like it, don't you? Not bad, not bad. Feeling good, aren't you? Time for some live calls. I'm feeling that good. You ready? Let's, let's do it. Let's take our first one. It's Evan. He's joining us on the phone from Denver, Colorado. Evan, are you with us? Yes, I am. How's it How going, Evan? It's going great. I just wanted to say that I love the show. I love everyone on there, except Kevin Pereira. Um, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I, I have the same problem, actually. You know, you took the words right out of you my got mouth, Evan. But it. enough about that. It's that. <laughs> all right, the gin seems kicking. Okay. At least he's being honest. So, what, what can we help you out with, Evan? Um, well, I want to know what's huh? the best way or what's the best um, website server to make a website if I don't know HTML? Okay, so you don't know anything about HTML. You just want to kind of. Have you considered a blog? You do, you do the blog yeah. and stuff. Sure. What do you think about a blog? I mean, that's a website, and you get to post, you know. Yeah, pictures well, I mean, or... what, what kind of stuff do you need to. Uh, well, to serve? Um, I, ha I have a photo class in uh, school, and I just want to post some of my photos on there to uh, show to show to like relatives instead of having to send them a CD. As far as not knowing any HTML, TypePad might be the best way to go. As or far Flickr. as like, or Flickr. Oh yeah, of course. Flickr would be really cool. Uh, yeah, because well, yeah, it, was, oh, we it, sh it should be Flickr because it's free. Yeah. Do we have a uh, even thinking about scan that. working on here? We do. Probably. Let's go to uh, this is the site you want to check out. It's f l i c k r dot com. And this is certainly not the only online way to store a bunch of pictures, but it is one of the coolest. Yeah, it is one of the coolest. Basically, they give you a nice little application that you can select all your photos, mm -hmm. upload them, you can resize them with a nice little uh, flat tool that they have. You can tag them, which is sort of a popular trend going on online right now, uh -huh. where you can sort of, you, 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 if you had a picture of a cat, you might give it a tag cat, and there will be lots of other people have the same tag cat, and you kind of build a community with your photos yeah, that way. Yeah, there's so many things you can do here. That's definitely a good place to go. And then we have a bunch of, we'll put a link to a few different blogging solutions up there as well. Yeah. You, you, you like TypePad. I mean, I like TypePad as far as like a really standard photo album, you no know, fuss, yeah. but it is going to cost you. Even, I think the cheapest version is five like bucks a month. Is it five? Something like that. Maybe. Right around. I think I'm in the middle. But, but it's anyway, cool. You got some options, Evan. Yeah.
Thanks when we that. come back, we'll be checking in on the chat room, so keep typing furiously. We might read your question next. If we don't, don't go crying about it. it makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. All right, let's see the scores from each round of today's land party. Look for Thug. Where is she? No, no she's nowhere. Not. No, not there. Uh oh. No, no Laura Foy in the high scores. Interesting. Right. It happens. Wait, no, maybe oh, she's wait. Right. Oh, oh, no. changing. No. We're going down the line. Oh, <laughs> that's our first six, I guess. Oh. How, how long do we she have left probably, on the show? She was probably next, though. I was mesmerized by the Lebowski package. I got distracted. Fair enough. That, that happens. Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> it's his wafting locks. Congrats, high scores. Thanks to Woo! our land party guest, G4TV.com's uh, Laura Foy. Good there job. There she is again. Yes. Thanks, Laura. Oh, and if you didn't get to play this week, go to our website right now. Literally right now and register for next Thursday. I think she won the hair contest too. She clearly she did. The chatters at all, all of them were for Laura. Can't now, win them all, Brennan. Oh, no, she is a girl. Before we get to chat, though, we want to remind you all to tune in tomorrow. Our Boost Mobile Live Music Friday guest is Dishwalla. Yay! Uh, so ponder what the hell their name means as they rock our studio. <laughs> Now, what's that going on in the uh, old chat room? All right, ready for some chatting. First one, Tyler Lode asks, did that light bulb Tom Green broke ever get fixed? Hmm. Yeah. The Looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah, Tyler. It's fixed. Brent, yeah. There was heads rolled after that one, yeah. actually. Uh, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that, but we shouldn't. Laid off we shouldn't. a lot of people. NDA. Remember Green the NDA, uh -huh. Brennan. Oh, NDA. right. <laughs> Moving on, Alex1354 <laughs> asks if that GIMP thing will work on Windows. Actually, he's looking for a C++ developer. Yeah. If you code, I would like it to contact him, plasticbugs.com. Uh, send him an email, and he would like someone to right. compile it for, for Windows. So. Hopefully his site will be up, and then you can get yeah. the email link on there yeah, he's, and contact him. Yeah. His site seems to crash quite often. Well, he gets slashed on it, and like 100,000 people just take out the site. It's popular. popular. No popular. excuse. Yeah. My book. Wow. Wow. All right, that's it. A big thanks to our guest, <laughs> wow. card stacker, Brian Berg. What's happened to us today? Oh, uh, you know, it's Thursday. Sun's on the water. Now go and rest for tomorrow, because you look tired. And... Get out of here, you crazy yeah, no, kids. Wow. <laughs>